this winter is going to be a very hard winter for a lot of people. This winter is going to be very tough on a lot of people. And I want to try to tr get the word out there to try to make sure that people are doing whatever they can do to be prepared, to try to offset a little of the hurt, a little of the pain that everybody is going to be going through between all these different things that are going on and all these different scenarios that are forecast to play out. Now, which scenario we pick? I pick the prepping scenario. The prepping scenario is going to save you every single time. The prepping scenario also makes sure that, you know, if push comes to shove, you will have certain supplies in your home. You will also have food for your family to eat. You will have a way either to have water or to filter water so that you and your family can survive. The prepping way is the only way that you will survive this upcoming winter without going through a lot of pain and a lot of suffering. Ben, now let's uh, let's really uh, get into, dive right into what is going on right now. And um, I guess the big question is, is can we prevent the disaster that is coming this winter? And what I really mean by this, folks, is, is I'm sure you all are quite aware of the way that some of the things are going and what is taking place in this country right now and what is going on around the world. People don't have money for food. The food prices are rising so fast over in Europe that people are just being priced out on a daily basis. As far as heating their homes this winter to try to stay warm, a lot of people have gone out into the wilderness, uh, whether it's private land or owned by the country, and just started trying to chop down trees and try to get firewood that way because they can't even afford the firewood. And people are being arrested for doing that. Now, I know in this country, you can't walk into a, a national forest and just start cutting down trees. Uh, you're going to get in a lot of trouble. Now, if the tree has fallen, it's a dead tree, it's a dead in the woods and everything else, it's already fallen, you didn't cut it down, you are allowed to use that wood to use to burn for a fire. So if, like if you're hiking, camping, whatever else, you're more than welcome to take anything out of a national park or a state park if it's already dead on the ground. You can take all that you want the problem with that is, is a lot of that wood sometimes can be rotten, wet, damp, or whatever else. It can be very difficult for you to burn in your wood stove in your home. The price that it's going to cost the American people this year to heat their homes should be enough to scare everybody into prepping. It should be a huge awareness piece before the prices really start jumping on a lot of different products that are a necessity that we have to have on a daily basis. You have to turn around, you have to really think about this folks. What is it that you have to have in order to survive, you have to have a roof over your head. You have to have food on the table. And if you live where it gets cold, you have to have heat of some kind to ensure that you don't freeze to death. Plain and simple. You know, they got us all right by the cojones, if you know what I'm saying here, folks. And, you know, yes, it is a election year. And then once the election's over, look out because all hell is going to break loose, if you get what I'm saying. They're going to promise us the world, folks. I'm telling you right now, don't fall for the smoke and mirrors because it's nothing but a bunch of BS. These people, what they want to do is, is they're going to promise us the world. And then as soon as the election is over, they're going to turn around and forget all about us. And this is where we're a lot of people are going to end up being on the wrong side and being hurt and being you know, not able to provide for their families. This is why it is so very important that we have to make sure that we're looking outside the box. Don't be a, you know, like a horse with blinders on. That's going to get you in nothing but a lot of trouble. It's going to make your life miserable. 
when the time comes that you have to really sit back and question what you're going to do. Are you going to pay your rent? You're going to pay your heating bill? Or are you going to put food on a table? When you have to start, you know, making that type of decisions, what are you going to do? How are you going to be able to deal with that whole situation? These are working class people that are out there right now that are doing their best to try to make sure that they are providing for their families, that they are doing whatever they can do. And I just don't understand why people don't see the writing on the wall. Prices on everything are still going up. Nothing's coming down in a food store. Your gas prices are coming down right now is because they release some of our uh, reserves. And But that is poised to run out just before the election there because they want to try to keep these prices down so that they look good. You see what I'm talking about, folks? It's called smoke and mirrors. And once the election is over and then this all takes place, that's all going to be gone. And where do you think the gas prices are going to go? Just like all the experts say, up. You're going to be heading back up to that 4 or $5 mark. I know in some areas, a lot of areas, it's still real high. It depends on where you live in this country. I'm sure after this hurricane, a lot of these stations are going to be raising their prices because they want to try to make up for their losses of not selling gas for a few days. You know, we always have to pay the price because of whatever takes place. It doesn't matter if it's war. It doesn't matter if it's a pandemic. It doesn't matter if it's um, election year. It doesn't matter if it's a natural disaster or whatever else. You and me are going to be paying the bill. These people sit up there and they want to promise all these billions of dollars and they're going to help with this and that and everything else. And then we're also promising all these other countries billions and trillions of dollars. First off, whoever we promise money to at this point in time, they should be like cutting that rate off and saying, you know what, until we take care of our own people, get things all situated over here as far as you know, so people can afford their rent, people can afford their mortgages, they can afford to put food on the table, they can afford to put gas in their vehicles, and they're not going to freeze to death this month. You can all just go and, well, kiss our rear ends. If you get what I'm saying here, folks, you know what? I mean, the time has come for people to have take a stand against some of this really ridiculous rhetoric that comes out of these people's mouths and the way that they just want to keep throwing money out there to all these other countries and, you know, trying to export oil and stuff in from countries where we shouldn't be exporting oil in. But we all know how that one goes. We could do it here. It's a lot cleaner. It's a lot better. We have plenty. Natural gas. We have enough natural gas in this country, in this country just alone to last another hundred years. Plain and simple. It's a proven fact. Scientists have already stated it. But we don't want to drill for it. We have to import it from somebody else because we don't want to look like we're the bad guys. Give me a break, right? Because your heating bills per the government are going to be about 40% higher than whatever your heating bill was last year. So if it cost you, say, two grand last year, add 40% to that, and that's what it's going to cost you this year. So you have to start making a plan. You have to start planning ahead. Maybe the best way to plan ahead is try to put a little bit of money towards your preps each week and making sure that you've got plenty of food that you can feed your family. So if you do have a tough month or if you do run short, you don't have to worry so much about going to the grocery store. You have food to fall back on to get you to the next paycheck because you just had to fork out, you know, seven, eight, a thousand bucks on fuel oil to have them come fill your tanks. I totally believe and I keep preaching this same statement. It is up to us to make sure that we have what we need to survive this upcoming winter. It is up to us to sit back and make sure that we have plenty of food. I understand a lot of people don't like canned goods. I get it. I really get tired of hearing people say, well, I wouldn't buy canned goods and I wouldn't eat that. You know, if, if, if it was the end of the world, 
Let me tell you something. When you get hungry, whether you people really like what I'm about to say or you don't, uh, I think most people probably would agree with me. But when you get hungry and there is nothing else there, you're going to eat whatever is put in front of you. If a good Samaritan or somebody says, I have some of this, you're going to eat it. You're not even going to ask what it is. You're going to mow it down like you haven't ate in weeks and maybe you haven't. So we have to make sure that we have the food for an emergency type situation. Don't wait until all of a sudden somebody comes on the radio and says, oh, there's going to be a blizzard. Oh, we're going to have a fuel shortage. Could be possible. We don't know. We have to wait and see what happens after this election. We don't know how these cards are going to play out. You see, a lot of people, you know, we don't have a crystal ball that we can look into. And if we did, it'd probably just scare the shit out of us because uh, you probably wouldn't like what you probably see. That's why a lot of people live um, day to day. A lot of people do not even go to the store and buy a week's worth of groceries anymore. They go to the store every single day and they buy whatever they're having for dinner. It's a very bad situation that we have put ourselves into. I don't mean to sound like I'm doom and gloom here, but you really have to understand where I'm coming from and how important this message I am telling you is. You have time. Not a lot. You have time to come up with those plans, to start putting the food away, to making sure that you and your family will be safe throughout the winter. That is all I'm trying to do. So the trick here is, folks, you have to really put your mind to the, the grindstone. You really have to concentrate on your prepping to make sure that you and your family are going to survive this crazy ass winter that is coming. Because if you don't, it's going to be a very painful and a very hard time for you and your family. And that's what I'm trying to avoid. I'm trying to help you avoid that type of a situation that you and your family are going to be going through.